Hey guys, Brady here. Welcome back to Sewing Back. And this is going to be our second episode of the old cookbook playlist. And today we are going to be tackling out of the rump for complete cookbook. Uh, it was originally written in 1908. This is a reprint from 1926. Um, we are going to be on page 105 in the book and we are gonna tackle pastry and specifically a lard pie crust. I've never made a lard pie crust. I've made a bunch of butter pie crust. That's typically my favorite pie crust. But as I started kind of thinking in my mind, I've never made a lard pie crust. I'm sure in my lifetime I've eaten one that had lard in it or had you know oils or other things like that. Um, but I don't, remember I can't point out in my head that said oh I I did a comparison of butter to to lard or oil or whatever or a combination so I have been wanting to try to do a lard pie crust because pie crust has been like my nemesis <laughs> I've tried several techniques it's fine it comes out it's not always very pretty I've had a couple that turned out pretty um, but the majority of them have not been very pretty. They are very tasty, but not pretty. And some of that is practice. I get that. But um, I have heard that doing a lard pie crust, um, I've even seen a lot of people talk about doing it with an oil like coconut oil uh, as your base, that those turn out really well. I haven't done that. And so there is a recipe as I said on page 105, for short paste, which is a, a quick, to, uh, it's gonna be a quick come together pie crust. Um, and matter of fact, I read the New York Times, uh, if you ever look at any of their recipes and things that they have online, they have some really, they have a lot of really good things to look through, skim through information, because they give you a little bit of back information on some of their recipes. And so I actually was kind of, when I heard the term short paste, I'm like, hmm, is that the right one that I should be trying to do for what I want to make? And so I was kind of doing a little research and I came across the New York Times uh, article on in their food part of the paper um, online that talked about short paste. And the reason that short paste is so good is because it comes together quickly. Um, and their whole thing was it tastes so much better than a store-bought pie crust so and anyone could do it because it's just that easy um, they did they were using it with a butter crust um, and what they referenced on their site I'm gonna use lard and we're gonna see how this goes now I was gonna read to you this little section right here that it talks about pastry because I feel like it's good information I learned something as I read it before to myself so I want to read it to you now. This is pastry. In making pastry, the best results are obtained by having all the ingredients as cold as possible and keeping them so till the pastry goes into the oven. It <clears throat> is the sudden change in temperature, some food science there, the sudden change in temperature as much as the actual ingredients used that make pastry light. If you use soft butter and lukewarm water to um, for your pastry, it will result with a much, it will result, its results will be a poor pastry, sorry. Tough and it will not be appetizing. Um, for plain pastry, lard or a mixture of lard and butter should be used. For very plain crust, lard, and good beef drippings. But for puff pastry, butter must be used. It is often desirable to have pastry that is light, flaky, and tender without being too rich. And this result can be obtained by the addition of a little thing called the Rumford baking powder <laughs> and the reduction of the amount of fats used. Where a rule calls for one and one half cup of flour and two thirds of a cup of fat, meaning lard or butter, the housekeeper may take half a cup of fat 
and a teaspoon of the Rumford baking powder to the cup and a half of flour and have equally good results as to the appearance and flavor at a much less expense. So they're trying to tell you that because the baking powder is cheaper than the fat, um, that you're gonna save money if you do this trick, which I thought was pretty smart, pretty smart advertising there. Um, it says, in making fruit pies, always put the sugar with the fruit, not on top of the crust, not on top, or the crust will be soggy. Um, so, in other words, you want to incorporate your, your sugar and stuff in with your fruit, not like sprinkling it on top because that's going to draw it out and make it a soggy. You'll probably end up with a soggy top and or bottom. And nobody wants a soggy bottom, if you've ever watched The Great British, the Great British Baking Show. Um, it says, a marble or a slate pastry board and or glass or china rolling pin are the best for pastry because of their coldness. But if the ordinary utensils are cold, good results will still be obtained. Now, and I thought this one was interesting because my grandmother always had a marble rolling pin. I actually inherited it. I have it. I've tried to use it through the years and not with a lot of success. It's so heavy that I always would have, even flowering it and all that, it would, everything would stick to it. And I would get frustrated. And so it's put away, it's packed away. I don't keep it out because it's really big, heavy, and bulky. And I just don't have the space for something that I don't necessarily use. So I found it interesting that they say it's good because it, it is cold. So I could see that. So I did think it was interesting because I did inherit this from my grandmother. So I think that she probably did use it and probably knew how to finesse it and all that. So the short paste is the one I'm gonna make. Um, this recipe calls for three cups of flour, one level teaspoon of salt, two level teaspoons of Rumford baking powder. If you don't have Rumford baking powder, I'm sure you can use whatever baking powder you like to use one cup of lard or you can do a mixture of lard and butter equaling one cup ice cold water to mix in about one and a third cup so sift together your flour your salt and your baking powder rub in lightly with your fingers the lard or the lard butter combination and remember that wouldn't be melted butter um, mix to a firm dough with the ice water and it says you can roll out uh, once on a floured board, use for whatever purpose desired. So this one is a good one, whether you're doing a savory pie or if you're doing a sweet pie, what have you, you can use the short paste to do that. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna be using mine for a um, savory pie because I have excess turkey that I need to use up and be a good steward with that was from leftovers. And so I wanna make a turkey pot pie. Um, and so that's my plan. Now I will tell you that it does not tell you, you've gotta think about the time in which this was written. Most people know if you do a pie crust, after you get it combined, you get it into a disc, you wrap it in plastic wrap, and you refrigerate it for a couple hours before you roll it out. Um, that's how you get a really good crust and being able to refrigerate it before you bake is going to get make it uh, flakier, all around better result. So, I know that it doesn't say that in this book. I know that from experience, and that was also something that was mentioned in the uh, New York Times um, article I mentioned already. So, that is gonna be my plan. I'm gonna put it together uh, the way it says, and I'm gonna get it in the disc, and I'm gonna refrigerate it. I've got some errands to do. I'm gonna go get that stuff done. And then when I come back, I will go ahead and start making up my filling for my turkey pot pie. Okay guys, so we're gonna get our salt, our baking powder, and our flour. I'll bring my flour over here. Because I have, just have a little bowl here and I'm just going to sift my flour through this mesh. 
Um, if you have one of those old ones, I have one of those. I don't find them very helpful. I like this method better. So whatever you have will be fine. Um, you don't have to go out and purchase something like this if you've inherited one of those other kind, or maybe you like the other kind. Just not my, hasn't been my favorite. <clears throat> okay, so this recipe calls for three cups of flour. So we're gonna hope my cup, yeah, it'll fit in there. And you want to make sure, when I took home economics, we were always supposed to have like a butter knife when we did flour because we would get marked off if we didn't go across and have a level amount of flour in our measuring cup. So that's one. I'm just using my finger. I think my hands are my best tools, so that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to do two. This seems like a lot to me for a pie crust. That's why I said I don't know how much pie crust I'm going to end up with. So it doesn't specify any of that. This one also doesn't tell you how to cook it because it, it figures whatever you're going to do, you're going to do it um, with whatever recipe in mind you have. And you will follow the baking instructions on that which is what I'm gonna do. So we're just gonna sift our flour. Sift the flour. <laughs> it takes, it's a lot of work to sift it, but it is so worth it. This was a delicious turkey pot pie. I am, that's, I'm a new biggest fan of lard pie crust. Okay guys. <laughs> It takes a little bit. It takes a little minute, but it's worth it. You're going to get a, I mean, this flower is so fine and beautiful. I, I mean, look how it's just really pretty. So it is worth the effort to do. I know a lot of people are like, I don't have time for that. Make time for it. All right. So now I need to put in, um, two level teaspoons of my baking powder. So again, we're going to do our level and you're going to sift these as well. A lot of times your baking powder, baking soda, depending on the moisture in your house and even your salt um, can clump together. Now with my salt, oftentimes I'll put a little grain or two of rice in it because I live in the south and it's a humid mess. Um, we're going to add one level teaspoon of salt to this recipe. So we're going to sift these. My dog is bird watching, so she's upset. <laughs> she sees all the stuff going on and wants to be outside. All right, so I've got all that done. So I'm going to move this to the side. And then I'm going to take my Danish dough hook. And I'm just going to incorporate the sifted ingredients together. I found this tool actually very helpful when I was doing the biscuits. Um, I used to have the, a biscuit a pastry cutter. I don't know what happened to it. So I think in the remodel, it was one of the things that might have gotten donated to Goodwill. All right, so we have our flour. We have all of our ingredients except for our lard and our ice water which I have right here in this container here so I can move these things out of my way I'm still going to use the same cup I'm supposed to use a cup of lard and so I'm going to stick my cup in here I'm going to wipe it off and I'm going to stick it in here we're going to try to get our lard into our cup. Ooh. And my other dog entertains himself with toys, so that's the squeaky you hear. So I'm going to 
try to level this out and make sure I have a cup of lard. And my lard is not cold. It's not hot. So I'm not real sure how this all works out. We're going to find out though, aren't we? All right. So now it says I'm supposed to put this in here and start working it with my, it says to work it with my fingers at first. So let's see what we got here. goes nothing. Oh my goodness, this um, flour feels like baby powder. Okay hey guys, well, first of all, it's very easy to pull together, and it's also very easy to get it a little too wet with your ice water, so you want to be careful with that. This also is clearly more than one pie crust. I don't know if this is supposed to be considered a double recipe or what, so I did have to add in a little um, to flour it because you don't want to overwork your pie crust. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to do it in a half and then 
I'm going to try to shape this into a disc. But I have to tell you, this is so much easier than the butter ones. This one, this came together very easy. And I may have tasted a little bit of the raw dough. It's delicious. <laughs> and I'm gonna wrap these up. I'm gonna let them chill for a couple hours <clears throat> while I go and do some errands after I clean up my mess. But this was such an easier way than how I've made pie crust before. So, and even if you do um, it in your food processor, to me this was so much easier. I get these in the refrigerator so they chill. I will see you back here in a few hours and we will cook a turkey pot pie using our um, short pastry from the 1926 Rumford's Complete Cookbook. So this should be fun and exciting and I can't wait to taste this for dinner. So I'll see you in just a little bit. All right guys, I am going to use some infused olive oil, six tablespoons of butter. I am going to put in my vegetables, mushrooms, carrots and onions and saute. And then I'm gonna add in some garlic and salt and pepper to this. I'm gonna add a third of a cup of all purpose flour to make a roux. To that, you're going to add two cups of broth. I used turkey broth that I had canned and one cup of heavy cream to make our inside of our turkey pot pie. And last, I, I add four cups of chopped turkey breast and a cup of frozen peas. Guys, I've greased my pan. I've got my oven preheated to 425. I am going to bake this with just the crust on top. This is my filling. I simply just took my chicken pot pie recipe I like to use, except instead of chicken, I use turkey. Just roll, this is so much easier than butter crust. I wonder if you rendered your own lard, like if you bought, you know, a hog or half a hog, and you can get the um, fat the, um, so that you can render it down if you ask for it. Usually, well, usually you can. And I'm wondering if it would have a different taste that has a taste. I don't know. I've never done it. I have a friend who did it. I need to ask her. I don't know if she's ever made pie crust with it though. Alright, so this one is a little more wonky in shape. That's okay. I think what I want to do I'm just gonna come up here. Actually, I'm just gonna lay it over. Does this have overlap? It won't matter. It'll taste good. <coughs> that is much easier. I guess this is why they like this this um, this pie crust. It is quick. All right, so what I've done is I have beaten one of my girls' fresh eggs. I actually got this one today. Look at that, look at that color.
but I just use the dehydrated parsley and it has a pretty color and a little flavor. That was pretty easy. It ended up cooking about 40 minutes. I love the Lord pie crust. That was a fantastic recipe. Um, and after using it where you used more lard and how easily that came together, I, I think the person who commented on the biscuit that I probably should have used more lard was correct. I think my biscuits would have been, um, I would not have had to work them as much. They would have, they would have been flakier and all the things. So, I will have to definitely give that a try. <laughs> so again, this was from, this was page 105 in the Rutherford Complete Cookbook. And it, this one was the one that was called a short paste um, high crust. It was easy to roll out. I didn't have a problem with my, my rolling pin. I just floured it a little bit. Our dinner is done, and part of my turkey that I was trying to use got used because I'm trying to be a good steward with what I have. So that's what we're having for dinner. Um, I can't take a bite of it just yet. It's a little just too hot, but um, I will let you know in the description what I think. I imagine it's wonderful. I'll let it sit for just a little bit. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching our second episode of the Old Cookbook Playlist, and I will see you next time. Haven't decided what I want to do next. Um, there's maybe a cake. I don't know. If you want to see something, um, let me know in the uh, comments down below. Um, if you want me to do a freshly milled um, biscuit or something like that or even pie crust since I did just use a pastry flour for this one. Um, tell me in the comments and, and we can certainly do that. She actually does have a whole wheat version. So let me know what you want guys and we'll keep working our way through the book. Thank you so much. Have a good one. I'll see you the next one. Bye!